So since the last update, um, there's been a lot happening and I just wanted to organize my thoughts in what I wanted to talk about. I think the first thing I want to talk about is all of the crochet stuff. Um, but before I get into that, I would probably like to reflect on kind of a big realization that I should have been more careful with what I wished for. Uh, not long before I got hospitalized, um, I was in the car with my dad and uh, I remember telling my dad, you know, dad, I wish that I was gifted or that I could learn better communication skills. Like, not, not just in a charismatic way, but more like clear communication so that I don't get misunderstood and that using, by using as few fluffy words as possible that I speak in a concise manner in a way that gets me understood the way I want to be understood and I think uh, growing up I think I got misunderstood a lot um, because I'm not so great with words and I kind of have an impulse problem where whatever's on my mind, I kind of speak a little too honestly sometimes, maybe a lot of times. And I think in part that's because I didn't grow up socializing very much. I kept to myself a lot. I took it upon myself when I realized that the reactions I'm getting out of people is not so great. I might as well stay away from people, you know? I grew up kind of feeling like a weirdo. I always had a small circle of friends. And all of that to say, my life before being hospitalized was like, work home, work home, work home. With very few times in between to visit friends, um, to do stuff with family, because my 40 hour work week would just drain the heck out of me. Um, I'm a very physical person, so, you know, doing nursing, it meant that I was always on my feet. Um, but also I liked being on my feet, so, uh, I remember I really enjoyed stretching and push-ups and things, so whenever I had a chance, I would <laughs> randomly pull push-ups um, against the kitchen counters, for example, and it would give me a boost of energy or things like that. And, and so in between, my leisure time meant I would draw watercolor, like physical watercolor. I remember I watched movies and anime mostly but that was a guilty pleasure of mine because i was so tired all the time just work home work home right um I, a humbling experience that i've had so far while being hospitalized since june till now is how much i've learned that i need to sit with myself before i speak it's one thing to know my own intentions and to talk for fun, but you know, connecting with people, but it's a whole other thing when I'm constantly surrounded by people that don't really know me, not like my friends or family does. And uh, I realize that there's so much room for getting misunderstood or misinterpreted because People have their own personalities, their own temperaments, their own standards for what they think is normal. And I remember back in college, I had a really popular girl in my class and during nursing school say, really, is that what you think about? Okay, so though I can't change my personality and maybe it will change actually as I live my life, right? I never know. But um, I just want to focus moving forward on being mindful with what I say. And to do that, I plan to, in my head, sit next to myself and just hold back and think, is this what I want to say? Are these the words that I want to choose to put out there? Taking into consideration the fact that there's a bunch of people around me that have different temperaments and personalities and different standards for what 
they feel is normal and like normal in terms of the expected behaviors and words and things like that. For example, I think I've been saying a lot um, about my cat, for example, being chubby and gaining weight and without context that might make me sound, I don't know, fat phobic or something, um, but I do have a legitimate concern, at least from my perspective. The last few times that I brought Buttercup to the vet, the vet was telling me like, you really need to help her not gain too much weight because once your cat becomes overweight, it's very hard to turn back. Um, and my family has Jenny, our family dog, who is a shorty. And I think her Shih Tzu side of her genes are very dominant. She is 12 years old now. She has hip dysplasia, arthritis, inflammatory bowel problems, and she has like a barrel in her tummy, uh, it looks like, and it's really hard on her health-wise. And uh, we've tried putting her on so many different kinds of diet kibble, and it's just really hard. She hasn't really lost that much weight, and I know there's successful stories out there of people helping their dogs lose weight, and she just hasn't seen success so far. And we see her suffer. I've seen her suffer, and I don't want that for, for my cat. I think the last time that I took her to the vet, she was 10.1 or 10.2 pounds. And then the year before that, she was 9.8. And I remember when she was 9.8, the vet said, you need to watch her weight. And now when I watch her videos, I don't think she's 10.1 or 10.2 anymore. And I'm hoping that when I return home, I'll help her exercise more reduce her treats a little bit and hopefully she'll be more fit and healthy. So now I want to talk about this fun art therapy thing that I did yesterday. I've never done art therapy before and it kind of was a really nice reflective exercise and I would like to do this exercise even on my own. It was really nice. So first it's this one right here. The line is basically me drawing out my breath as it comes out. And at first it was overly controlled, like up until this point right here, because I was a bit self-conscious. And then it became kind of awkward and abstract because I really did try to relax and not think about it. So it's kind of weird. But the point of this exercise was to write down and illustrate what I think I'm leaving behind and what I'm looking forward to. So on the bottom here, what I think I'm leaving behind is stuff like the routine that I used to know, um, the usual ability to drive that I that I had before. Um, I had certain hopes and wishes that I feel like I have to kind of put in the back burner now. Um, my independence, like, there were, I had a usual front, and I think that's what I'm leaving behind. I think I have changed while being hospitalized and through my experience so far with what I've been dealing with. I used to have a work family, um, both in the last place of work and especially the second last place of work. And I think my second last place of work was the first time that I grieved losing that sense of family at work. Um, and I think I'm also leaving behind lots of stubbornness, um, this tendency to not want to ask for help. And instead, I have to learn uh, to know when I need help and when to ask for help. And that's something that I think I'm moving towards slowly. Um, and then what I'm looking forward to, of course, is being able to see my buttercup and maple. 
um, changing how I communicate with myself as well as other people, possibly possibly taking some more courses to make myself more employable. I, I don't know where I'm going to be after all of this, where my body's going to be, so I don't even know what I'm capable of, physically, especially. Um, and there could be a new work family, and I look forward to that. I just look forward to working again. And I think most of all, I'm looking forward to what my body is going to be like after all this. I drew a line underneath my armpits because that's basically the point until my toes where my sensation and mobility is so weird. Um, there's like numbness on my left side and hypersensitivity on the right side. My mobility is all wonky right now, messed up. I can't even weight bear right now. Or at least I'm still afraid that I'm going to fall again. But anyway, the art therapy activity afterwards, um, it led to the therapist asking me to focus on one thing that I want to focus on. And, and this one up at the top is the one that I chose, which I think is the most important, where my body's going to be. And then she asked me what I think this state of the paper and just everything kind of means to me. And she said something really cool. But I think I also realized something really interesting too. So to me, the fold doesn't mean that I'm completely cutting off all of this that I'm looking forward to and leaving behind. There's still a part of who I am, where I've been, the stuff that I care about. Doesn't mean I'm dumping them away, they're still a part of me, but I want my focus at the forefront to be about my healing, focusing on rehabilitating my body, encouraging it, being positive and what the art therapist saw and it was a really interesting metaphor I love this one is that all of this stuff has led a path to where I am right now that was really powerful for me that all of this stuff have that much significance. They're not... <laughs> they're not just stuff that... that makes me feel sad or... hopeless about things, but rather that they're a part of my journey and that they're really important. Mm. Next, I want to share something fun that we did. So this thing right here is a watercolor paper. What we used are really pigmented watercolor ink. And we first had this piece of paper uh, taped to a plastic board and this sheet of paper was spritzed with water so it was damp and then I got to choose the colors I really love purples and pinks uh, and the blue was a nice accent as well and um, on the dampened sheet of paper I just started dropping droplets of uh, the ink and basically the fun exercise was to watch as the colors blended out and into each other and uh, the other part is waiting to see what the end result is because while it was still developing it was one image and then after it dried is a whole other image and the other fun thing was interpreting kind of what it looked like to me and 
couldn't help it. I mean, if you look at these little tendrils at the edges, to me, it just reminded me of neurons. Um, and I remember during nursing school looking at the anatomy of a neuron and learning about their functioning and just being amazed how intelligent they are, how intelligent our bodies are, that they just know what to do. You don't have to tell it what to do. They, they each they each have a function. Um, the neuron, for example, oh my God, I'm gonna get so nerdy right now, but um, the way that one neuron will communicate with another and trade neurotransmitters, um, the way that they all have these little receptors and um, a way of delivering it, it's just so cool uh, and so fun to learn about. Um, and that's already apart from the fact that our immune systems have their own little system um, of recycling themselves as well. Like when I learned about apoptosis, I thought, oh my God, how does our body, our bodies know how to do that? Um, when, how does our body know how to discern, you know, when some cells need to die and some cells need to attack the bad stuff entering our bodies? Anyway, so that was a really fun little activity. Um, my crocheting has been <laughs> becoming a new obsession of mine while I've been at the hospital. Um, I've already given away one of the teddy bears to my sister because she loves red. This one is remaining. I still have to make one more red bear. I think red seems to be a really popular color. Um, a funny story about this first bear that I made is that he's not... So I made a mistake with this bear because I lost track of count here and he ended up being extremely big. As for this guy, I made a mistake somewhere here anyways and now this guy is extremely small. But I hope I could still make it cute. The latest thing that I completed is this bee, which um, I used the wrong crochet needle size, um, and I think that's in part why it didn't exactly turn out the way I hoped for it. I also was supposed to make eyes on this guy, but it was so freaky when I started embroidering the eyes on it. Um, that's the little black patch right over here where one eye was supposed to be and I just couldn't do it anymore. It was too freaky. So I gave up. But I do like how the wings are really chubby. It's really cute. Overall, it's just really round and cute. I might just leave it that way. And the first, the very, very first crochet project that I did was this turkey. Um, I think I talked about it before, but I'm just really proud of it. Well, I also learned recently that you can actually make dishcloths with crochet materials. Um, there's a special crochet yarn that is purely polyester, so you're really, you really are supposed to use these dish scrubbies as dish scrubbies, and I'm so excited to make them. I think they're also going to be really great for stocking stuffers for upcoming Christmas gifts for all my friends and family. So I look forward to that. As soon as I get more yarn uh, in other colors that were requested by my friends, like green and, and what's the other one, pink um, and purple, I really look forward to making those dolls and hopefully they're gonna turn out really, really cute for them. I think before I forget, I wanted to include this in my update, a couple of things. In my last update, I was, I think I was talking about um, getting a bit triggered uh, when I hear people ask me something as simple as, oh, can you walk? And I really, really regret my reactions to that. I guess in a way, it was sort of this automatic reaction, but I regret it because, I mean, I've been hearing it 
uh, asked again, uh, even as of recent, and I don't react the same way because I don't feel the same way about it as I did before. And to explain that, it's because I can see from their point of view that it's not meant to be hurtful. It's just a question. And they honestly don't know. Like, for example, porters. They just get a task to move me from one place to another. And, I mean, I look the way I do. Of course, even I would ask, like, are are you able to stand? And, like, how are you able to transfer from this bed to the stretcher? Do you need a wheelchair instead? So, aside from... Aside from wanting to be more mindful about how I speak, I definitely want to be more mindful of how I receive things as well. So that's something that I reflected about as of recent. Uh, And then the other thing is about my radiation sessions. So at first it was really daunting and I really hate counting numbers when it comes to like, for example, 30 sessions. But I've actually completed a lot of them, and I think as of today, I only have five left, which is amazing. What's still daunting, to be honest, is that I still have rehab left, and I don't know actually where I'm going. I only know that the surgeon told me, oh, like, you know, you're going to go to this specific rehab, you're going to be there for three months. But now I realize I can't really just assume that based on what he said, um, because I think there's a system of uh, probably like an application thing, and I have to be approved, I have to be accepted. My hope is that it's not actually going to be a whole three months. I wish I could go back home sooner, but I also don't want to rush things and then go home too soon without giving it my all to rehabilitate. I do look forward to going home, but I hope that by the time I'm going home, I'll be maybe at my strongest or at my most capable. And I really, really hope that I'll still be able to live independently without asking so much for help. Um, I'm kind of really worried about if I'm going to need a wheelchair because um, what I learned is that there is a program called like ADP and they're going to cover something like 75% of the cost if I need a wheelchair. But I don't know how much the end cost will be on me. I only have a certain amount of savings. And that's only going to last me so long. And if I need to pay for a PSW or something like that, I don't know how much that's going to be. And I don't know how long I'm going to need that for. So I am worried about finances. But, I mean, I don't even know where my body's going to be after all of this. So I think it's a little too early to get scared. (laughs) But I am worried. All right. 